when Prince Harry and his wife Meghan Markle stepped down from their senior positions within the royal family, they relocated to North America with the hopes of forging a new life for themselves and their young family. Ultimately settling in California, the Duke and Duchess of Sussex chose a particularly affluent neighborhood to start fresh. Montecito, located just a 10-minute drive from Santa Barbara, has some of the area's most stunning stretches of coastline and robust hiking trails. It is also home to some of LA's most rich and famous, earning its status as an exclusive enclave. Harry and Meghan purchased their £11 million mansion just a few months after their explosive exit, and while appearances suggest the couple is content with their new home, a Hollywood journalist has speculated that they will not stay there forever. Sandro Minetti, a show business reporter described as the ultimate Hollywood insider, suggested the Duke and Duchess may choose to relocate when their children get older. Harry and Meghan have two children together, three-year-old Archie and one-year-old Lilibet, and Mr. Minetti speculated that while they appreciate the quietness of Montecito as they raise their youngsters, at some point, they may move to a different Californian city. This, he speculated, may well be a place loved by Harry's late mother, Diana, Princess of Wales. Appearing on an episode of Hello! Magazine's A Right Royal podcast last month, the journalist said, I do not see the Montecito home being their long-term home. I see them, when the children are older, moving over to Los Angeles County, perhaps Malibu, of which Princess Diana was a huge fan. In 2003, it was reported that Diana had planned to move to California before she died, her butler Paul Burrell claimed the princess had already picked a house in Malibu for her and her two sons. Meghan and Harry aren't invited anywhere as Hollywood pals break away from their drama Meghan Markle and Prince Harry aren't invited anywhere after neither were seen at Oprah Winfrey's birthday party. Kinsey Schofield, a royal expert and host of the Today for Daily podcast has claimed celebrity friends of the royal couple do not want them to distract from the event. Find out more here. Diana hoped to find comfort and freedom in the US, according to Mr. Burl, who said the princess wanted to move into Julie Andrews' old home along with Prince William and Harry. Dottie Al Fade, Diana's partner who died in the car accident with the princess in August 1997, reportedly bought the six-bed home for $7.3 3 million, 6 million pounds, before their romance started. Speaking to Good Morning America, he said, a lovely house, saw all the plans for it. It was going to be in Malibu. I saw the plans. We sat on the floor, spread out all the maps and the layout of the house. She said, this is our new life, just won't it be great, think of the lifestyle the boys, nobody is judgmental here in America, you don't have the class system, you don't have the establishment. Princess Diana has already divorced Prince Charles at the time she was supposedly planning her relocation and shared custody of their boys. While her eldest son was set to be king and her youngest be by his side, Mr. Burrell claimed the royal family would not have tried to stop the move. He explained, she's, Princess Diana, not going to be king. Neither are her kids going to be queens. Why couldn't they come and spend a portion of their time in America? That would be very stiff and staunchy if the Queen would say, no, they can't go to America. His comments came after the publication of his book, A Royal Duty, in which the former butler revealed a slew of intimate secrets. William and Harry released a statement denouncing the book and his subsequent interviews as a cold and overt betrayal. 
Initially, Mr. Burrell expressed anger over the young prince's reaction but during his appearance on GMA, admitted he had compassion for William and Harry. Some may argue that Harry has already followed in his mother's planned footsteps by leaving the UK for a new life in the US. However, in recent days, Mr. Brill has claimed this is not the path the princess would have taken, contradicting his assertions almost 20 years earlier. Speaking to Marie Claire on Monday, he said, I think he's, Harry, convinced himself that this is the way his mother would want him to go but I could counsel him with that and say, your mother was a huge supporter of the royal family. She was very proud of you, Harry, being part of that family, and your brother. She always supported the monarchy, she was proud to be a royal princess too. Even when she died she was still a princess, Diana, Princess of Wales, and she wanted to continue to support the crown in anything she did. He continued. There is a huge difference between your mother's work and what she wanted in, her, life and yours. Just because she wanted to have a bolt hole in Malibu in California to take you and your brother on vacation once or twice a year isn't to say she was about to abandon the country. It comes after the Duke of Sussex referred to Mr. Brill as the butler, rather than his name, in his recently published memoir. Mr. Burl said it annoyed me intensely, adding, I was really upset, really upset, by, the fact that he referred to me as the butler, Mummy's butler. Well, Mummy's butler was called Paul, Harry, and you knew me, all your life you've known me as Paul. He had never known me as the butler so why suddenly has there been a shift only recently, a shift to being called the butler? Suddenly I'm sort of being dismissed by this petulant prince as irrelevant because he says my tell-all book told nothing. Harry's memoir will likely be the peak of the Sussex's offering of insights into the royal family, it delivering an unprecedented level of honesty about life behind palace walls. In the months before it was published, Meghan's podcast Archetypes was released on Spotify where the Duchess sat down for two explosive media interviews and the couple were the focus of a tell-all documentary series on Netflix. Commentators have predicted that this marks the start of the Duke and Duchess full-blown Hollywood careers, with Mr. Manetti speculating that, if the couple doesn't move to Malibu, they may relocate to a neighborhood closer to the center of things. He said the couple could perhaps move to Bel Air, a bit more towards the center of things as their Hollywood careers develop and they decide to focus on that, adding that if the Sussex children wish to enter the world of showbiz, they may be inclined to move to where the action is. Mr. Manetti continued, it, living in Montecito, works for now, but I'm not sure it'll be their home forever, 